Well, welcome to the recording for week eight, which is Exceptions Handling and Assertions Unit. And this recording is going to be a little bit different than the others because we're down to the wire to the end of the class. This recording, I'm just going to go over where all these answers are. I'm not going to discuss everything within the unit and all of that. This unit only has one quiz, and then it has the unit project, so there's not as much in this unit as there have been in other units. So just going to make sure we have all these uh, Class Connect write-up questions covered. So on page one, what is an exception in programming? So we'll go to uh, section A. And in programming, an exception you can see down here is an unusual event beyond the control of the program. It could be any many type of errors, either a programming error or a, a user input error. But that's the basic uh, definition of what an exception is in programming. On page three, listen and describe in your own words the three types of exceptions. So go to page three. And page three, you can see it starts talking about the different types of errors. And there are three types. There's a compile time error, and you can see the description of it. Runtime error, description of that. And logical error, and the description of that. So as the Class Connect write-up says, please use your own words. Don't just copy and paste all of this information. So for each one, just give me a sentence or two telling me what that error is, describing that error, please. And so that was uh, questions two through four. In section B on page one, what are the two benefits of using the word, the keyword assert to catch exceptions? So section B, page one. So section B, page one. So it says in Java, you can also use the assert key to check a condition during the development process. With the assert key, you can catch errors before the program is finished. So you catch errors before the program is finished. Also, catching the errors before the process means you do not have to do all the exception handling during the development. So those are the two benefits to using the assert keyword. Okay, back to the Class Connect write-up. Page three, what must each assertion statement contain and what does this requirement do? So section B, page three. Okay, each assertion statement must contain a Boolean expression. And what a Boolean expression does, it is allows the result of true or false for the condition. So what this means is that each assertion statement must have Boolean expression, and then it gives you, and what this does is this gives you a true or false for the error. So that's what it must have, and then what it does, it gives you a true or false for the error that happens. So then the program can figure out if true, I'll do this, if false, I'll do this. Okay, page four in section B, explain the difference between the two ways assertions can be declared. So page four, section B. So two ways that they can be declared. The first form of assertion declaration is much simpler than the other. In this form, the Boolean statement will carry only one expression with a value. And then the second form is down below two expressions are involved in the syntax. Syntax. So these are the two different ways. So what you want to do in your own words is explain the difference between the two different ways. So that's the, the that class connect write up question. Explain the difference between the two ways assertions can be declared. So you saw the answer to that. Then last in section C, what is a thread? So let's go to section C.
And a thread is pretty simple. A thread is a program's path of execution. So just like when you're in, like uh, if you do um, uh, discussions in your classes, those are called threads, right? So it's the path by which people are answering the question. When well, programming, the thread is a program's path of execution. And then the second part to that was what are the two to explain the two types of threading? There's single threading and multi-threading. And let me go back to that question to make sure what it said. Listen, explain the two types of threads. So that's pages five through seven. So there's single thread. So you can read about this and in your own words explain what th single threading is. Here's examples of single threading and then multi-threading. So you can read through this to see what multi-threading does. And that's where there are two or more threads in the same program that run concurrently. So it's like they branch off and they do things at the same time. So that's the that's where you can find the answer to this last class connect write-up question. So that's all I have for you on this. Again, this is shorter than the other ones, mostly because we're coming to an end of the course, but also because this unit, you just have the exceptions quiz, pre quiz, and then you have the unit project, and of course the unit projects are all research projects. And I don't have one in here yet, so I'll need to get that put in for you. So I'll, I'll have that posted uh, later on today. So that's all for this uh, unit. So I look forward to your work coming in. Bye.